Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so far. Also, okay, Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. Um, now again, um, I have children, that's the name of you, and uh, I really can't see their future. How they will have a future without knowing about coding and without knowing about technology. Uh, so do us a favor, uh, add this to your Facebook. Uh, basically, uh, if we want to learn, teach young kids to, to learn how to code, okay? Uh, which is a skill that is, I think, is quite uh, important in the future. Um, actually, when I listen to Dr. Jen, I'm kind of thinking something. I mean, uh, we are investors, uh, so I think the next thing I want to do is to feed the, our computer a lot of stock, stock graphs. And so uh, we want to train the, the, the computer to, to trade for us. This is, I think, the, the, uh, the final <laughs> of our, uh, the holy grail, so that uh, we don't have to, we can live happily ever after in somewhere in Japan now. It's uh, we're working very hard every day. Uh, so uh, our next speaker is, uh, uh, is my good friend, uh, Fred, uh, Fred Wong. <coughs> okay, he's now the, uh, he's the founder of uh, AI Hong Kong, and also he's the founder of the, and the CIO of Evolution Capital. Uh, he has ex extensive experience in both uh, uh, investment and in technology fields. I mean, he started his uh, uh, his he started working in the in, this, uh, in the industry, technology industry many many years ago, and uh, in semiconductor in sales and marketing, and then he become a analyst at BMT and now is a hedge fund manager. So I'd like to pass the time to Brad. This event. Uh, I have two roles here, as uh, Kyle mentioned. Uh, uh, the first role is the hedge fund manager, investing in the global technology companies, including NVIDIA, AMD. Uh, not meaning that we are in a long position, maybe we are in a short selling position. Uh, and the other role is the uh, co-founder of the AI Hong Kong, the, the AI, uh, AI group. Okay. Uh, so I, I started my... Uh, I, I, I was a... a uh, set uh, in, the, in the engineering school and uh, semiconductor stream um, and, uh, around two, more than two decades ago. <laughs> so, and then I started to uh, get into the semiconductor field for around, uh, uh, for around, around, around one decade and then moved to the investment bank. After that, I found uh, it is very interesting investing in the global technology stocks. So uh, after, after that, uh, uh, we Especially when we talk about AI, uh, Eugenia have been very excited about robot and excited about a TensorFlow. So that aroused my interest to go into details how we can monetize uh, AI instead of going in depth into AI. So this is this will be my my major theme of the of, of today's talk. So. Uh, Uh, we have we have just passed the uh, uh, Easter holiday. We spent around uh, maybe around roughly more than more than six months to eight months to study AI. Uh, we learned about uh, what is CNN, RNN, uh, the image recognition, the voice recognition, the inference. What is the gradient descent means? And we take some time to learn about it, gradient descent. The, what is the activation function? Softmax, uh, 10H, sigmoid, LSTM. Just like what uh, uh, Dr. Jones said about WX plus C, the linear regression, the hyper hyperparameter, the learning rate, the batch size, the sequence, blah blah blah. So uh, we also learned that uh, as as the AI grew very fast, we also learned that a lot of uh, uh, new network have been too complicated. So we need to add the drop out layer, right? So all those things are learned from Udacity, <laughs> uh, including some language degree as uh, Kyle and. Uh, uh, and, uh, Eugenia also uh, participated in the in the in the learning degree of Udacity. So I think there's a lot of uh, way to learn about AI, uh, but our message is quite clear today. AI is evolving much faster than before, and there are only with AI and non AI two camp maybe after thirty years. Okay. Okay, so this is my, na uh, my name card for, for the AS uh, group. Uh, I call myself Alchemist Appetite. So, Alchemist. 
from source, of course. <laughs> and advertising, we are still learning. So we, we learn how to monetize the AI knowledge. So O2O -O means that we have, today we have an offline event, and we have a lot of a chat room in WhatsApp and WeChat group, so that uh, we can communicate more effectively through the online world. Now, Bill Gates also mentioned that we always un underestimate the world, especially for distant future. So a lot of people thinking AI is so AI to Navi, they will replace us, replace our work, replace our job, blah, blah, blah. But we see this opportunity in, 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 in the time coming. Those are the, the books that we have. Uh, actually, Eugenia bought those books, and I borrow those books to read every, every, every holidays. Uh, the, I think around, uh, I've been to this, to this, uh, to this uh, uh, seminar room for many, many times. Uh, most of the times I talk about investment. Because CFA Institute, oh sorry, HKSFA, uh, the CFA uh, society always have event here. <laughs> and we always talk about investment. So that recalls my memory that I spent a lot of holidays, most of, around three years of the holiday, including Easter holiday, the Valentine's Day, the Christmas holiday, all studying about CFA is a painful experience, <laughs> but very worthwhile. But now I found another, <laughs> another painful experience from AI. Because there's a lot of things to learn from AI. Every, every week or every month, there's not new things coming out. So that is quite, uh, re that demands a lot of energy. And actually, uh, so those, those books, uh, we haven't completed yet reading all of them yet. I think we'll only complete reading around one, a quarter of the book. So we can take a, take, take a reference of that uh, set of books. We also uh, attend a TensorFlow uh, event, which those uh, Google engineers have arranging their talks in Hong Kong, uh, City, City University. Yes, <laughs> that's where we first met. <laughs> oh, OK, OK. Uh, so besides going into Harvard or MIT, actually, a lot of people drop out from Ivy League. Drop out. They earn her, and they don't compete. And a lot of them uh, study online, university. So this is the way that uh, to learn AI. Of course, we also <laughs> learn AI from from Westwell, which is one of the uh, inspiring movie I found. It's not talking about a uh, how to uh, work our robot. It's talking about the consciousness. It's talking about love. It's talking about philosophy. So I think this is one of the uh, best drama that I've ever watched. I highly recommend you to. <laughs> Take a look at this uh, drama. Uh, from machine learning, as uh, Dr. John mentioned, uh, many around six decades ago, we have uh, machine learning at that time uh, to start to evolve. And then nowadays, we, go, we went to AI. So the difference of the machine learning and AI is the capacity is, is to scale. And most of the machine learning part, you can see, is uh, uh, more, a bit like rule based or induction related. But now the AI is more on the deduction side. Sorry, induction side, just like mathematical induction. It's an induction. But for machine learning, at that time, most of that is a deduction. It's a logic. Okay, uh, how to apply AI? Uh, one of the ways to apply in the auto, autonomous car, right? But actually, most of the autonomous cars right, right now, uh, so far, is it's not can cannot be classified as AI. Most of them are rule-based, actually. I, I think until LIDAR with our NVIDIA uh, level four uh, ADAS, that may be uh, classified as AI. That means you don't need to teach the autonomous car to drive. You just uh, need to let it go into the uh, on the road, and then it can learn how to how to drive by by hitting around. <laughs> This is the way of the AI learning, uh, pouring a lot of data set into the algorithm, into the training model. Uh, so this is the ADAS. Right? So uh, our focus is also on uh, monetize, monetizing, mo how, how to monetize the AI knowledge. So one of the ways is to combine the hardware side and the software side. So the reason why we want to learn about the software side is so get a lot of insight from uh, computer science background, because it's a, it's a fusion of the hardware and software. So which kind of hardware 
will finish the jobs or uh, will complete the task much better than the others. I think the, it is very controversial here. Very, very controversial. That FPJ means Intel, means Silent, DSP, uh, like mobile eyes using using DSP, one of the core, ST from ST Micro. And TPU, as you know, is from Tensor Process Unit by Google. CPU, Intel, so GPU, NVIDIA. So these companies add together around uh, maybe around 400 billion US dollar market cap, which is a great opportunity for us to invest. And here you will see uh, Facebook, Google, Amazon, uh, Microsoft, IBM, blah, blah, blah. So the whole AI many people said uh, is uh, artificial intelligence. For us, we think more important will be augmented intelligence or an actionable intelligence. So uh, we understand AI, but how, what we should do? So I think two, two key phrases will be, we are going to accept the unchangeable. AI is the trend, we cannot change. This is already confirmed, no, no need to argue anymore, I think, whether AI will change or will replace our job. Or, I think 99% of our jobs will be replaced within 30 years, very likely. But what we need to do is to change unacceptable. Uh, and for the upside, I think we will be all uh, at least 150 years old, or we will be we will live forever with AI's help. I think around within uh, after 20 years to 30 years, in consensus, we will live forever. If 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 have, we have we have the resources to, to buy those medicine or to buy those robots. It, it's quite, quite, quite likely to happen, I think. So uh, in our perspective, AI have divided into f another three dimension. The first dimension is perception. Perception, um, which, is, which means uh, you, you perceive things, sensor. The other thing is con connection, which is yingzi, so most of the time we are talking about AI, most of the time we are talking about here, connection. Uh, from deduction to induction, from machine learning to deep learning, or from machine learning to AI, right? Uh, but most of the time we will we forget about perception, and we forget about limbs. Limbs is the arms and arms and legs. So for auto autonomous cars, autonomous car, we also call, call about, most of the time we talk about connection. So if for connection, this we, we can we can divide it into four parts. The first part will be the the algorithm, which is soul, the AI, the con the connection, right? And for the for the big data, actually, it's the food. So so imagine that that is a body, a body have a have a brain, and then you have sensor, right? You have eyes, you have ears. This is those are the sensors. So sensors that will be internet of things, IoT. And for the, for, the, for the data set, it is actually the food. And for the limbs, it is computing power as well. So if we look at, we, we, we try to look at uh, AI from this perspective, then actually the, the world is a bit different. Uh, Dr. John also mentioned about cubic cube. Cubic the human's fastest record is 4.9 seconds to complete the, the cubic cube. However, for a machine, Infineon, a German company, this is limbs, L-I-M-B-S, yes, the limbs. And very, very fast, and without destroying the cubic cube, cube it's only six, uh, 0 0.6 seconds. So for specific tasks, I think there's no need to argue anymore that AI will replace all of our rule-based jobs. Rule-based. Uh, Masayashi-san said, uh, Einstein and Leonardo da Vinci, roughly around IQ is 200. 200. Uh, I think most of us are under 200. And AI, after 30 years, will be 10,000. <laughs> it's not 300, 400, it's 10,000. So he said that uh, most likely uh, our, our shoes will have the intelligence of 5,000. <laughs> but you are, on, you are wearing the shoes. But this shoes intelligence is is five times or ten times more high, uh, smarter than us. So later on, I think the richest guy in the world is not Warren Buffett, will not be Bill Gates, 
So that's why Bill Bean said, ah, we need to charge the tax for, for the robots. Otherwise, you will not be the richest man anymore. <laughs> so I think later on, who owns the robots or who, who write the AI in a successful way will be the richest guy or richest lady in the world. So human will become slave quite, quite, quite likely in short term will become slave of AI. We, can, we should be prepared of that. Uh, so up to now, you see our approach, our presentation and method. We are not scientists, so we don't know the, the, the technology very in depth. However, we are not talking about awareness, too shallow. So we are in between and we try to monetize our idea. So you turn to right. However, the downside is jobless. Okay, there's two, there's one, one, one movie, it's an old movie, it's quite interesting, called uh, Time, uh, In Time, yeah, In Time. I, I'm not sure whether how, ma how many of you have, have brought that In Time. Mm -hmm. Carl always mentioned the world has become cashless, or, or Peter also mentioned about cashless, right? I think, to the end of the day, it's not cashless. It, it's really no, no need to, the, the unit of the, the resources, how to exchange, it's not cash, it's not no longer money, it's time. So from you, you, if you haven't watched that uh, movie, I, I highly suggest to uh, everyone have a, have a light bar on your, on your hands, and that is your cash. So the, if the cash run now, you will die. <laughs> it's quite, and the world will become AI and non-AI. Only, only two group. Okay, they, I think this will be the future world. Well. Uh, so from control to learning, from cold system to open system, that will be the paradigm shift of the coming era. So six suggested way to monetize uh, uh, AI. The first way, the first way is to become an AI entrepreneur. So you can set up your company. You can be the you can be the richest guy or richest lady in the world if you set up a very successful AI company. The other way is to join the wave, right? To study study AI. Or just like Matrix, uh, have, have you watched the Matrix? The, the Neon, Neon. Hey, <laughs> he born as a hacker. <laughs> you think the AI will take over? Us? Will be a Skynet? So he's going to hack hack the Skynet. So <laughs> this is the way. And incubate education. Today we are our, our event is in the education area. And piggyback, piggyback the way. I mean, we are, we are doing that, hedge fund. We are investing in those AI stocks. And for some fake AI stock, we soft sell it and tell everybody that it's a risky company and they are telling lies and the time didn't come yet, so we <laughs> soft sell it. So this is the way for hedge fund doing. And avoid the wave uh, means that, uh, as uh, Dr. John also mentioned about, about the, the fact that goes uh, the arts. Yeah, so if, to some extent, we can tell you that if after they are not data set, accumulate are not data set, uh, reading all those fan, fan, uh, there's some uh, 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 Shakespeare's uh, articles, or uh, they, can, they can compose a new one. Or uh, let's say uh, in Hong Kong, uh, Leslie Jung or Anita, Anita Moy, they read, they listen all the songs and they, and they can mimic or to so Anita Mui and, and Leslie Jones will have a new song coming out. Are you scared? You don't feel comfortable, right? Why? It's AI, it's good. <laughs> Leslie Jones, your idol, they have a new song. How come you don't like it? It's, it's, it's not natural. So I think for, for, for our next generation, either to learn AI or learn art. art. Just like, uh, Ladies like diamond, but the perfect diamond, they, they, they don't like it. The perfect diamond is composite, it, it, it's chemistry com composite, but people don't like it. They like natural. But natural diamond is not perfect, actually. <laughs> so it, synthetic diamond is more, net, it, it's more perfect. So I will, I will go very fast uh, for this slide. Uh, so drop out. If you are in, in a famous university, drop out early, as early as possible, maybe. <laughs> and be a kind of entrepreneur. Uh, since uh, Udacity may be one of the way to grab a new idea. Uh, professional, middle office and back office, I think they are at risk. Rule based, right? In uh, deduction. If that is deduction, the role is deduction, then it's at risk. If it's induction, 
it is still at risk, but it's later, maybe after five to ten years. So, a hacker. Now we should put me on there, maybe next time. And education, we have 2,000, 2000 followers on Facebook, and Meetup is around 500, and WhatsApp and WeChat, we have another couple of hundreds. And most of them are AI engineers, uh, including Slack. Yeah, we have a Snatch, Snack group where we can contact Virginia for, for if you're interested on if you're engineers to join our group. So the piggyback, I, I like this chart very much. <laughs> uh, that's 12 AI stocks that we have been actively uh, trading, including Facebook, Amazon, AMD, NVIDIA, Google, uh, uh, M is Microsoft, uh, Silent, IBM, SoftBank, DAT is Baidu, uh, Alibaba, and Tencent or Tesla. So those are the 12 stocks that we have been studying in depth. Uh, and Masa yoshi -san started the 100 billion vision fund. What, what, what 100 million billion means? That means all the VC in the world add together is less than 100, 100 billion, and his fund is 100 billion. So you can see his ambition. And so I think uh, SoftBank and Google will be the winner after 10 years. Uh, quite may, I, I think quite likely. However, it doesn't mean that we need to buy the stock now. Because, because if you buy the stock now, it, it may drop around maybe 20%, 30%, or 50% before it go up 10, 10 times. So investment is, a, yeah, timing, is, timing is very important. So we need to navigate the stock instead of buy and hold. So one of the examples, this is SoftBank. Uh, they have multiple, they, it's a, something like a holding company, 80 billion US market cap, market capitalization. They hold in 20, 27% of Alibaba. And then they also invest in WeWork. You like WeWork, right? WeWork. WeWork, 70 billion market cap, with, but it's a unlisted company. But SoftBank also invest in it. Peppa is a robot, right, Limbs? Working with uh, Hong Hai, Hong Hai Group, the Foxconn, uh, also maybe at the back is Apple, probably, and also invested in ARM, as we mentioned about CPU. This is the most powerful CPU in the world. Everybody in, in your pocket actually is powered by ARM, and imagination uh, is GPU, and ARM is very successful. So, so this is the the cash flow from uh, from from SoftBank, including operator. SoftBank means the SoftBank operator screen. Yeah, well those are the EBITDA, EBITDA. So we need to care about the fundamental and the valuation and the cash flow of the company. Instead of just, oh, this AI company, they will, they will rule the world, they will buy now. And then you, after, after several months, you find, oh, we are lose, you're losing 30, 30% or 40%. That's not the case. So it's one of the criteria for us to select the stocks. And yeah, this, this is our team, and we have been investing a lot of time in studying the AI stocks. Uh, my name is uh, uh, for, for hedge fund side. Uh, my contact, in case, uh, in case you, you, you like to join our, our, our group, our AI group, or our investment skill group. And uh, please briefly introduce yourself. <laughs> Remember, don't just say hi, and then <laughs> I cannot locate. Uh, so, for for artistic things, for us, we are combining AI investment and also blood type. So this is the, I always said that it's an atomic bomb, a new kill weapon for us. Uh, we will share more later, uh, next time, I think. That is the most interesting part. We, we are fusing AI and, and blood type together. And <laughs> that's something interesting. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the Using AI to generate a new chart, new a uh, new painting is a bit uh, scary. So that's why you can study more arts or do crossover, uh, crossover different area instead of just one area. Okay, and so I think for fund managers is Clever already find the self flow fund managers. So I think fund managers also at risk. It's also at risk. We are at risk. Uh, but I think accountants, lawyers, engineers um, will be replaced very quite soon as they are rule-based professions. Uh, so next 
Uh, the last part I want to share is the consciousness. What AI will evolve? How, how AI will evolve to, to, uh, to what, what kind of a scenario? So consciousness, uh, something like Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, saying that uh, at first level, we don't, know, we don't know what we know. When, when we are 10 years old or, or 15 years old, we don't know how much we know. Right? And then we found we know what we know. And then we found we know we actually don't know. And then maybe after, after 60 years old or 70 years old, you found you don't know actually you, you don't know. So you know everything already, but you, you think you don't know, you don't know. <laughs> so this is something, some, some consciousness. Uh, uh, for robot, I think, I think we'll, we'll stay in the first two parts at the, at the beginning. So, a lot of people confused about smart and AI. Always people think that the autonomous car is AI. Actually, they're smart. It's smart car. It's not AI car. But everybody think it's a smart, it, it, it's an intelligent, very intelligent, then will be an AI. The, so it, it's a big mistake, uh, mistake and misunderstanding. So later on, I think AI will evolve with consciousness. So I also suggest you to watch a movie called uh, Human. Uh, not, not, not movie, it's a drama, Human. There's two, uh, two seasons. I'm watching the second season, which is talking of, of, a lot about uh, consciousness. So for consciousness, uh, oh, well, we, we, we date back around uh, 3,000 years. 3,000 years, okay? Imagine, many, many years ago, before first industrial revolution, uh, we rely on hunting and farming. And we used around 3,000 years to come to the first industrial revolution, which is the steam, the, 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 the invention of the steam engine, right? And it takes around 300 years from first industrial revolution to the fourth industrial revolution. So from steam, to Faraday's, which is Faraday, the electricity, uh, the, the light. And then the third, the third one will be internet, right? And then now, today, we come to AI. It takes around 300 years from the first industrial revolution to AI. Okay, 300. So previously, it's 3,000, 3,000, and then 300. I think within 30 years time, the AI will have consciousness. I think, uh, I don't have evidence, but a lot of, uh, including Google, talking about the eternal life, uh, Larry, I forgot Larry Page or Sergey Brin, and then Masayashi san talk about, talk about the development of the AI and talk about 10,000 uh, 10, score of the IQ, right? So I think within that 30 years, AI will be will first, will have common sense. Right now, they don't have common sense. The Google Echo, uh, not Echo, the Amazon Echo, <laughs> the Google Now you are buying, or the Siri, is very stupid, actually. You cannot consecutively, it's not a very mature NLP, natural language processing. It's very, you, you need to, you, it's just a machine, they cannot understand you very well. So later on, I think machine will have common sense. If you have accent, actually, you, when you talk to the Siri, the Siri will have will learn your accent. <laughs> you have Shanghainese accent, you have Malaysian accent. Actually, the Siri will learn your accent and then reply you with your accent. That 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 is much comfortable way to, to communicate, right? <laughs> Although it's not it may not be right. <laughs> Common sense, and then will migrate to consciousness. And when the consciousness comes, there will be an inflection point. There will be a singularity. Will be an inflection point, and this inflection point will lead to. AI to think where, what is love, and what is philosophy, and what is God. <laughs> Maybe later on they will think, ah, it's time for us to, to be the God, <laughs> and then we will die. So, uh, so no more, no more uh, excesses after that, because we will be, they will kill us. So before we go into eternal life, we will be killed. And this is what AI story. And even, we, even though we know, we cannot stop it. So accept those we, is unchangeable, I think, because of human curiosity. So I think only one or two slides left. Consciousness. 
Ma uh, 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 Li Fei Fei also always talk about semantic. I think couples of uh, scientists uh, have been developing uh, a lot of uh, pre pre presentation. I think Li Fei Fei's one is more vivid and more interesting relatively when compared to Andrew or, <laughs> or, uh, or other scientists. Why? Because Li Fei Fei always talk about his her, her daughter and talk about how what is sem semantic what is common sense? Instead of talking about hard coded technology, this is human. So I think consciousness will build on common sense. Without common sense, that will not be consciousness. So the first step to consciousness is common sense. Okay. So we we, we are interested in the prerequisite of the con of, of, of the of the song. So five. Uh, th th these couples of slides are actually uh, what we did uh, we. We ourselves developed those charts and thanks for your genius artwork as well and, and, uh, and the idea. So nowadays, you, from your face, you have uh, five, you have uh, uh, eyes and ears. For, you can see that this is, CN, this is CNN, Convolution ne Neural Network, right? Voice recognition is RNN, Recurring Neural Network, and most of the time it's LSTM, right? The long short term memory. So, AI now have that sensor, but no touch because they don't have limbs. But later on, they will develop the limbs, and they can they can learn faster, and they can, they can learn from YouTube. Now you it's unfair. You just give a picture, photo. It's unfair actually because human is not learning from picture or photo. Human learn from video. It's from a, it, it, it's a many many page of uh, of the of the photos. So I think. Later on, maybe it taste or smell is not, not, not very, not, uh, it's a bit minor, and we go to semantic, and we go to common sense. So, 1%, I think less than 1% of us are elite. I think all of us are elite here. <laughs> but globally, 7 billion people, population, I think 99% of the people are excessive. Are excessive. So only 1% of the people will work for those 99% or only 1% of the elite will earn all the money or resources or time. No more cash concept, it's time. <laughs> will be owned by 1% people. So we are trying best to squeeze into that 1% or we are helping our, our, our hedge fund clients to squeeze into that 1% in order to get eternal life. <laughs> this is the way that we have been doing. And uh, our time will fragmented and time sharing. This is what how, why we call the fusion, brain and machine fusion. Okay, and this is the last page. Uh, I think that because of fragmented, fragmented approach, I think there will be a digital nomad era will, will, will come. What means digital nomad? Uh, I think the, the reason why Master Yashisa, SoftBank, invest in WeWork, why? I think this, they already saw that from smart to AI is a pawn to a three-dimensional or a multi-dimensional array is a tensorflow, tensorflow like. Digital nomad means that your time is fragmented and you you will share your time with different entities uh, later on. So to contribute your your, your best talent for, for every every company instead of uh, keeping your all your time in one company. I mean that is the concept of or we work as well. So globally, you can travel around. You can you can to go to Tokyo, and then you work there in Lobonki for maybe two hours, and then you earn you earn some money, and then you go back to Hong Kong work for another company. It doesn't matter. You you can you can it can be multi multi. Uh, it can be parallel processing as well. So I think this is what called digital nomad. So that's why I think we work have been so will be will be successful because of that that uh, approach. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I hope I'm not uh, confusing you. Uh, to conclude that uh, we'd like to monetize the, the opportunity in AI instead of thinking that it's a threat. So, but we need to work very, very hard to squeeze into that 1% of the population. So this is uh, my, my, my presentation. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Before you go, we'd like to do two things. Uh, number one is that uh, I, I would like to present a gift to Dr. Joe uh, for his wonderful presentation. 
Uh, number two, he said, uh, if you don't mind, uh, because again, we want to promote AI in Hong Kong, uh, so we'd like to take a good picture, if you don't mind, uh, just, sit, just sit where you are. Um, uh, so uh, we want to we want to our job to promote uh, the, uh, the community in Hong Kong. So we I ask uh, Dr. Jim to come up. Uh, Thank you so much. Okay. I'll keep this in my office. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, so, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, can I have one one word? Uh, sorry, this should be out of Go Hong Kong. Full full name. Oh. I noticed some of you already like uh, the page. Full name. Out of Go Hong Kong. Thank you. Is there room for any questions? Oh uh, yeah, I think after the I think after the picture, uh, we do mind uh, uh, a friend. Uh, you know? A little bit far, I would expect this is uh, five to at least ten years away, not, not that close. Yeah, this is why I will comment. Thank you. Yes. Hey, um, just a question of why do you think that Google needs to add this computational layer, Taser, on top of GPUs and CPU units? What's, their, what's the motivation? I, I still don't sort of get it, other than why did they define this data structure? or? This unit called Taser. Oh, I see. So the question is, uh, uh, why do we need to match up our like a tensor, but not like a matrix? Is that what you? Yeah, mean? exactly. Yeah. I see. Um, I would say, uh, as I have mentioned in my early slide, uh, there's still a bunch of uh, unknown questions in the mathematical modeling. So, for example, when we talk about a matrix, you want to do the inverse. So there's a standard way to do the inverse. But when you talk about a uh, uh, tensor. You know, uh, the tensor itself could be multiple dimensions. Do you see it from this side, or do you see it from the other side? Or for when you do like a two tensor, you want to, to put them together. How do you position the tensor so that you can get the optimal result? That kind of question is still unknown. So that's why they come up with uh, this uh, type of uh, structure called tensor. And that is uh, the reason. And in terms of uh, uh, mathematical modeling, the mathematicians, they work on tensor computation already uh, more than 10 years. So this is again not something new. So that's why I would say uh, Google borrow this uh, concept of tensor and they come up with this tensor flow. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, and I think but not the AI company, but we are doing a uh, machine learning project. And then uh, we want to uh, ask you to share uh, one of the issues we, we, we are, we are uh, doing is now uh, about the uh, uh, Chinese handwriting. Chinese handwriting. handwriting. So um, this is a you know the long time typical uh, machine learning problem. Huh? Yeah. So I want to uh, uh, hear uh, your idea and will about um, any uh, tensorflow uh, uh, 
deep learning uh, technology that have been applied on the handwriting Chinese, uh, Chinese language yet? And, and do you, how about the accuracy rate? What's the... Uh, um, thank you for the question. Um, to my understanding, I, I'm not aware of this, but Jen, have you seen this, something like this? Um, but maybe not, but I would say uh, that will be, thank you for the question, that will be categorized as an image again. If you uh, imagine the hand stroke, yeah, yeah, wait, wait, yeah, so it's a wait, still uh, wait, image processing. Yeah, 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 and but the question is that so far we, we do some research, mm -hmm. the accuracy is still not correct. So that is the issue. <laughs> we want to see how far we are. We are. Uh, uh, I would say um, uh, it would be not a difficult project, but uh, it's the matter of uh, the way research group is uh, digging into this uh, uh, problem. So maybe uh, we can talk offline to explore uh, to, to resolve this question. Yeah, I think it will uh, align with uh, the uh, image uh, recognition uh, pattern recognition problems. Yeah, I think that would be a quite uh, interesting research area to work on. We, we, we should talk about that. Thank you. Yes. Um, so uh, general, is it for me or for Fred? Uh, for Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for, for general, for those processing units that we have Moore's law? Yes, Moore's law. It's fine. For dedicated uh, processing units like the tensor processing units, is there something that you saw the table? Uh, but it wasn't very easy to, to compare, right? Because, right. Um, so my question is, you spend, uh, researchers spend many resources to develop one more, uh, but then what about we just wait six months and then a general processing will uh, be better and So, uh, yeah. Right. That, 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 that's a very good question. Um, I, I think it's always a, a, there's a trade-off, okay, between general or specific chips. And uh, there's always a, you, you, you can't get the best for both sides. So that's why uh, my answer would be, uh, um, depending on the application, if you're targeting multiple applications at the same time, we always go for more general, like a TensorFlow would be the thing. But if you, you know what you're doing for one specific goal, okay. again, ASIC would be always the best. That, that would be the, the, uh, the fire, so nothing can compete. Because of that will basically you hand hand draw everything that can get you the best result. Yes. Do you think development of ASIC uh, boards will become cheaper and cheaper? So so uh, now we have a sex of general purpose of units, right? Google has a specific problem, they can develop their own ASIC and they own. Will this be uh, uh, more accessible in the future? Will it become cheaper and cheaper? Um <coughs> that, that that's a very good question, thank you. Um because uh, one of, as you can see from my early slide, I also work on uh, cryptography. Yeah. So one of the key questions today is about what we call post-quantum computing. So people that talk about quantum computer, uh, it's getting there, but not that close. Um, but however, when we talk about the existing basic technology, because my, my, my classmates from Chinese U, they're working in uh, IBM uh, uh, UX. So I know what the process technology is uh, heading to. They face a huge amount of challenges. And that's why I think Fred will agree that all these uh, EDA company, is, uh, is, uh, uh, the stock price is getting lower because it's uh, the huge challenges there. So that's why if you talk about the process technology, they're going smaller and smaller. However, the, all the cat tools, uh, they need to evolve as well. So that will expose to a huge challenge. Getting back to your question is uh, the, the price. Uh, is it getting becoming a commodity? Okay, that will be the question. And I would say uh, it's still uh, a long way because uh, people, they are still, today when you talk about nine nanometer, they're talking about five or four nanometer. They're still getting there. Uh, I don't see it as a sign, but the investment cost will be much higher. Imagine 10 years ago, if uh, the SMIC, they want to come to Hong Kong, the technology will be much cheaper. But today, if you want to start another uh, an infantry uh, in the world, the investment cost will be mega scale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I think besides the foundry price, the wafer price uh, from uh, so, uh, the, the, the advanced note of the, we all need to also consider the masking charge. The masking charge is 10 times higher from, from the 28 nano to 14 nano or 7 nano. So if the design is not stable yet, you still need to modify the design, then ASIC is definitely a bad way to do it because the masking charge is too high. Uh, so I think TPU, Google is very smart. They know that that ASIC is their treasure. So they are, I think they, will not, they are not going to sell that TPU to Amazon or Microsoft. Or <laughs> they will not sell it. They just leave it in their in-house uh, cloud service. So they push others to use their cloud computing as a total solution instead of they sell the TPU to, to, to the outsiders. I mean, they, that is the approach. And so Microsoft and Amazon will, will work out their own ASIC as well, I think, later on. But, but although they are a very big company, the masking charge <coughs> is still very high. So I think not many companies still can afford those uh, uh, ASIC development fee. Not, not only talking about masking charge, and also you need to consider our R&D cost and the, and the whole system, uh, as Dr. Jan mentioned, about uh, the cadence, synopsis, uh, the, the tools, the EDA tools. That is a huge investment in the, in the 7 nano and, and 10 nano. So I think yeah, that, that may be one of the... Thank you for the two questions. <coughs> yes. Uh, quick question for Fred. Yes. So in the uh, early days of uh, gold mining in San Francisco, yeah, yeah, yeah. people made money are not the, the, the gold miners, right? yeah. but the shovel sellers. Yeah. So who do you see as the shovel sellers uh, in the AI, AI world? Well? Yeah, so that's why NVIDIA and AMD are uh, two, to two, times, uh, two to three times last year. So this is the same, same story happening. People recall that the mining is the, the, the best seller or the most beneficiary one will be, will be the tools, will be the weapon. So everybody, a bit like, also like Bitcoin. If you recall your memory, Bitcoin, many, many years ago, we used Intel, AMD, CPU to take the mine, to take the Bitcoin out. But the speed is too low, it's too slow, and people think, oh, GPU will be faster, and people <laughs> use GPU. And if each GPU is not fast enough, they go to FPGA, because FPGA more powerful power consume, power, power saving, and also effective, which is Silent and Altera. And then people think that it's not fast enough still, so they go to ASIC. So it's, it's four step. Now we go to the four, we already run, run, we went to the fourth, uh, fourth step. So you can see Nvidia and AMD share price up two to three times, and then come down, come down now. <laughs> because they, because TPU just published uh, an article last week or two weeks ago, something like that saying that they will be the biggest competitor to GPU in inference or maybe in training mode. I, I'm not sure. This, this, is, this is the area that we are, we, are, we are studying as well. If in the training mode, then it's a big threat to, to, to NVIDIA and AMD. If only in inference, then it's only a threat to silent only. But you can see all, all these three companies' share price coming down. And also because of the uh, first quarter result, because now the first quarter results are coming out. AI expectation is very high in those companies. But actually, the real contribution, maybe 5% only of the total revenue. So people will, most of the investor, especially for, the, for those generalists, will disappoint. They will say, hey, how come it's not 20 or 30%? It's 5%? <laughs> they, they will shock. When they shock, the, the, the share price will re may react. If those are all specialists paying, then everybody knows oh, it's only 5%, it doesn't matter, we, we will go to 20% later on. But, but, but that is not the case. A lot of generalists came in already. So this is the way we pay the stock instead of just oh, AI then. It, it's, second, it's second derivative. I think the market is quite efficient, right, relatively. But the player are not so, not so familiar with the game. <laughs> so we need to care about how they react. <laughs> This is about the investment scale, yeah. Okay, uh, one last question. Uh, yes, Anthony. Uh, hi, hi. Yes. Uh, we are classmates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first class on. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, thank you for your interesting presentation. So you talk about you know, something about the hardware architecture. How about on the software side, especially on the compiler? I mean, you need a really good like technology to add the software into hardware. So what's sort of interesting in there when you can talk about that on the software side? Um, I would say uh, because of the, you know, 10 years ago you don't have a GitHub, yeah. But now today there are lots of uh, open source community. So the development in terms of software cycle is uh, getting faster and faster. Um, so I, I, I'm more optimistic to, to, to see that. The, in terms of compiler, uh, that would be uh, the mapping. When you talk about the data flow, mostly the research is focusing on how do you optimize the big width. This is uh, one angle. The other angle is uh, how do you uh, like uh, swap the data processing in order to reduce the data data dependency scrub. This is what we call uh, director exactly graph, DAG. So that kind of research is very active. Uh, uh, but I would say uh, one of our research group in, in UK, they are one of the leading group over there. But in terms of uh, Asia Pacific, and I would say uh, the research group in uh, U of Tokyo, or the U of Tokyo, uh, the, uh, the professor called Fujita, they are again leading uh, this area. So I would say uh, there, are, there are several layers. The first layer is uh, the, the modeling, okay, the mathematical modeling. And then later on, you, you got to have this uh, software compiler side. This is again, you, you need to do a, a lot of optimization. And then the next step is uh, the hardware side. So in Hong Kong, I want to do some reflection to all of you because uh, I'm, I'm teaching programming. But when I face uh, the university student, uh, they, they don't get access to the job in market in terms of the hardware job. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the job market, there are some FPJ engineer jobs. But in terms of the university side, uh, we, don't, we don't train a lot of students. They, 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 they know this is promising. So that, that's why I, I see this uh, AI Hong Kong community is uh, very fascinating. We hope to connect more, and then eventually we can connect a few good students. You know, there's a snowball effect. And then once uh, those students land in really good position, then more students will, will, will chip in. So that's why getting back to your question, I see there are lots of uh, research community in, in the world, but in Hong Kong, in terms of uh, this area, uh, is there's still a lot can be done. And, uh, and that's why I feel really uh, thrilled uh, to be here to share with you all today. Okay, thank you. Thank you for coming.